Hey guys, it's Nina and I'm back with another video. So today I'm going to talk about the differences between real locks and faux locks and managing your expectations around them. This might seem really simplistic to some people and I understand that, but you'd be surprised how difficult it can be to tell the real from the faux sometimes. I've looked at locks and I have genuinely been stumped. If you want to start with faux locks to grow out real locks, I'm not going to judge you for that. I will say though that there is a sense, at least for me, there's a sense of accomplishment that I got knowing that I started from the very beginning and I had to work my way down. Don't feel like you're breaking some sort of code if you decide to, you know, give yourself a little boost to get started. And I really just want to help you manage your expectations. That's all. Faux locks a lot of the times tend to be very shiny while real locks are matte. Real locks don't reflect light the way faux locks do. You can moisturize them, which you should, and that's gonna give them a nice little bit of sheen, but typically speaking, they're not gonna be extra shiny. The density of the locks, the hair being tangled, you're keeping light out, essentially. There was this picture of lettuce that I found um, in 2014 when I was starting my journey. I wanted my locks to look like that, and it's an absolutely gorgeous picture. And then with a more trained eye, I realized, wait a second, her locks are wrapped. I feel some kind of way about that now, looking at that, because I'm like, I want it to look like you, but them ain't your real locks. But anyway, the second difference, the curly ends versus sealed ends. So a lot of people who get faux locks have very curly ends. If you have type 4 hair, 4B or 4C, your locks are more likely to seal up completely. It's typically the looser hair textures that are going to get the curly ends because the hair just needs more coaxing to lock very tightly. You know, that's why locks work so well on tighter, kinky, coily hair. The last difference is how the size of your parts affects the width of your locks. So if you're doing faux locks, you can do smaller parts and have more hair on each lock because you're able to wrap more hair around it. If you have very small parts on real locks, chances are you're going to have very thin locks. Whether you're interlocking or palm rolling, that hair is going to be condensed and compressed and it's going to get smaller. Don't expect to have very thick locks unless you plan on having bigger parts. So I hope this video was helpful for you. Again, I know it's very simple, but sometimes the simple things need to be illuminated and spelled out. Let me know if you have any questions and I will see you next time.